Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. Today we're diving into an invention that has become an essential component in countless machines across industries, the ball bearing. From bicycles and cars to complex industrial machinery, ball bearings are present in all kinds of moving mechanisms. But have you ever wondered how ball bearings are made? Let's explore the fascinating history behind this essential engineering marvel and how these precision parts are manufactured today. The origins of ball bearings can be traced back to ancient times, but the modern development of this component started during the Industrial Revolution. The concept of rolling elements reducing friction has existed for centuries. Early evidence shows that the Egyptians used cylindrical tree trunks as rollers to move heavy stones while building the pyramids. Fast forward to the Renaissance, and none other than Leonardo da Vinci sketched early designs for ball bearings in his notebooks. Although his designs were never built, they showed how rolling elements like balls or rollers could reduce friction between surfaces. It wasn't until the late 18th and early 19th centuries, during the Industrial Revolution, that ball bearings took their modern shape. With machinery becoming more advanced and widespread, the need for components that could reduce friction and wear became critical. The first practical ball bearing was patented by Philip Vaughan in 1794. Vaughan's design included a ball running along a track, allowing for smoother movement. Then in 1869, Jules Surire, a French bicycle mechanic, invented ball bearings for bicycle wheels, enhancing the efficiency of early bicycles and setting the stage for the wider use of ball bearings in many types of machinery. These small components would eventually become crucial to industries like automotive, aerospace, and even electronics. Before we delve into how ball bearings are made, it's essential to understand their purpose and how they work. The basic idea behind ball bearings is pretty simple. They reduce friction by rolling rather than sliding. Imagine pushing a heavy object across a flat surface. There's resistance because of the friction between the two surfaces. Now, place some marbles or small round objects under the load, and suddenly it becomes much easier to move because the rolling elements reduce the amount of contact between the surfaces. A ball bearing consists of four primary components, the inner ring, the outer ring, the balls, and the cage or separator. The inner ring fits around a rotating shaft and moves with it, while the outer ring remains stationary. The balls sit between the inner and outer rings and roll in specially designed grooves, reducing friction and supporting loads. The separator holds the balls in place, ensuring that they're evenly spaced, allowing smooth and efficient movement. Ball bearings can handle both radial and axial loads, making them incredibly versatile. Now, let's talk about how ball bearings are made. The process begins with the raw materials. Steel is the primary material used in manufacturing ball bearings due to its strength, durability, and ability to resist wear and tear. The most common type of steel used for ball bearings is a high carbon chromium steel. In some cases, ceramic materials or other alloys are used for specific applications requiring higher performance like in high-speed machinery or where high temperatures are involved. The production process starts with the steel being cut into small rods or wire, which is then formed into a rough shape for the inner and outer rings. This steel must undergo a series of heat treatments to increase its hardness. The process of hardening the steel involves heating it to extremely high temperatures and then rapidly cooling it, making the steel more durable and resistant to wear. This is critical, as ball bearings operate under heavy loads and high speeds, requiring materials that can withstand intense pressure and friction. One of the most interesting aspects of ball bearing production is how the balls themselves are made. 
The steel balls start as small, roughly spherical blanks cut from wire. These blanks are then placed into a machine that shapes them into perfect spheres using a process called cold heading. In this process, the blanks are pressed into a mold at high speed and force, transforming them into smooth, uniform spheres. Next, the balls go through a grinding process to remove any surface imperfections and ensure they are perfectly round. Grinding is followed by lapping, where the balls are rolled between two plates coated with an abrasive substance, further refining their smoothness. At this stage, the balls are measured to meet extremely tight tolerances. Even the tiniest deviation in roundness could lead to increased friction, wear, or failure in high-performance applications, so precision is critical. After grinding and lapping, the balls undergo a final heat treatment to harden the surface and improve their resistance to wear. Once hardened, the balls are inspected for defects, such as cracks or surface irregularities, using advanced testing techniques, including ultrasonic and magnetic testing. Only balls that pass these stringent quality checks move on to the next stage of production. Once the balls, inner rings, and outer rings are all machined and treated, it's time for assembly. The inner ring is placed inside the outer ring, and the balls are inserted into the space between the two rings. A cage or separator is also installed to keep the balls evenly spaced. The cage ensures that the balls don't touch each other, reducing friction and wear. At this point, the ball bearings are lubricated. Lubrication is critical for ball bearings because it reduces friction and prevents wear over time. Without proper lubrication, ball bearings would quickly degrade due to the constant metal-on-metal -metal contact. Depending on the application, different types of lubricants are used, including oil or grease, which ensures smooth operation for a long time. The last stage in the production process is quality control. Every ball bearing must undergo a series of rigorous tests to ensure it meets the necessary specifications. These tests check everything from the precision of the parts to the smoothness of the rotation. Vibration testing, noise testing, and load testing are just a few of the methods used to verify that each ball bearing will function correctly in its intended application. The level of precision in ball bearing production is extraordinary. Even the smallest imperfections can lead to significant problems when the bearings are in use. Ball bearings are a remarkable example of precision engineering that we often take for granted. The process of making these small but vital components involves cutting-edge technology, high-quality materials, and an unwavering commitment to precision. Ball bearings have played a crucial role in countless industries, helping to improve efficiency, reduce friction, and extend the life of machinery. Next time you hop on a bicycle, drive a car, or even use a small gadget, remember that ball bearings are quietly working behind the scenes, making modern life run smoothly. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed learning about how ball bearings are made, and want to see more deep dives into the engineering world, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.